Andrew Bolt joins us for the first time on the Hot Breakfast. Andrew, thanks for your time this morning. No worries, Lou. Andrew, we don't want to go through cross-examinations and things like this, but explain to us just the change, and, and do you agree with what I've just said there? Uh, what, what are the things that have led you to completely change your mind on this situation, or at least say to, uh, to Scott Morrison, we have to change the philosophy going forward? Two different questions there. I haven't okay. changed my mind completely. If you read the okay. column, okay. I've right. said in this column nothing more than I've said for 15 years. I quote myself from 15 years ago. That's the whole thing, Eddie. There's people um, who seem so stuck on, you know, it's either totally black or totally white that they put people in camps they don't belong to and don't read the detail. Uh, Andrew, 15 years ago, Rupert Murdoch came out and said... Uh, if in doubt, let's save the world. And then there seemed to be a, a shift in the reporting in the, the newspapers. I remember when you did 15 years ago, but in that 15 years, no, you uh, haven't, you haven't, you haven't missed. I disagreed with him publicly. I disagreed yeah. with him publicly and he changed his mind. The thing is, I've always said, the world has warmed over the last 100 years. It's been slight. Uh, and it's not, and some of the disasters predicted have not occurred. Like you know, we were told we'd never rain again, and uh, the drain, the dams would all empty, and uh, there'd be uh, and it would have massive, massive problems with India, bushfires, and, yeah. and I I islands would disappear under the sea. None of that has happened. Mm. None of that has happened. And the point is, there are bad things that might happen from slight increase in temperature, but so far what we've seen is a greening of the planet and record food crops, which has to be good. And when we look at this, we have to balance the one against the other, costs against benefits. That's with global warming itself, and it's also with schemes to change it. You can say, look, let's go and totally reorganise the way that we organize, you know, have this economy, this economy. Let's get rid of all the coal-fired power stations. Uh, fine, if you, uh, you think you, know, you need to do that, but give us the cost of that, and then tell us the benefit, like by how much will the world's temperature come down if you do that, and is that good or bad? Now, you say here that you privately urged the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, to uh, change his tack. Um, yeah, what, what have you said to him? I'm not going to say ex um, what he said to back at me, but what, I've argued, what I told him then, just after he became Prime Minister, is what I'm saying now, uh, publicly, and that is you've got to have a cost-benefit approach to this. Just saying... Yeah, global warming is a catastrophe. It's going to give us terrible bushfires, and you know. Uh, but I'm not going to do as much as the Labor Party to save it. That's not a credible message. I don't think that that works with people who are freaking out. And I think what you've got to say is uh, global warming. Some some things are good about it. Some things are bad about it. Net net, what it is, what is it? And then when I when someone produces a policy, you get the same effect. You ever look one of the things? Now I know you know. We're, you know, you're more left wing than me, and you know, fine. That's that's not the so issue. Tell of the yeah. <laughs> you, no, that's that's absolutely not true. I actually worked for Labor twice. You haven't. Um, I know. I've been what, impartial. The thing about yeah. the, what if you have a look at uh, how um, Shorten lost the election. One of the key moments there was when a really brave and you know gutsy. Uh, Channel 10 reporter Jonathan Lee got up in a press conference and said, hey, by the way, Mr Shorten, your climate change policies, how much is it, are they, they going to cost us? And he wouldn't answer. And you might remember that question dogged him for a week or two weeks of the campaign. And a bloke, uh, an economist in Canberra, figured what the cost is to the nearest billion. And it's horrific. Yeah. And hey, that's hey, the point. Hey, Andrew, can you I know, ask you... have got to ask people, well, how much do your policies cost us and what's the temperature going to come down by? Yeah. And the reason the politicians don't tell you the answer, and I've asked this from... I asked Kevin Rudd this, Julia Gillard got asked that question by a proxy of mine, uh, I've asked uh, Scott Morrison, I've asked uh, Tony... They won't tell you. And the reason is about zero. And I think we need to get a little bit fair income about this because you're asking particularly poor people to pay higher power prices... And it's fair to say to them, oh, listen, for your pain, here's the game. And when politicians don't do that, they get it in the neck because people know they're being conned. And that's a fair point you make, uh, Andrew. Speaking of, of costs and the, uh, the paper that you are uh, the Australia's most read columnist too, has there been a real cost now to News Limited and people unsubscribing to say, hey, you know what, we're not going to listen to this, uh, 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 I suppose, policy that the uh, News Limited papers, mainly led by you, and James Murdoch came out and said the ongoing denial of the role of climate change among the news outlets in Australia 
given obvious evidence to the contrary, I cannot support. It's a pretty powerful voice coming from inside the Murdoch camp. Has that changed your tone this morning? Not at all. Like I say, uh, uh, Luke, if you go through my article, I'm, I'm astonished that people, you know, have, have taken the tone that uh, uh, Eddie just did. Because if you go through my article, I make it perfectly clear by quoting myself, and this is exactly what I've been saying for 15 years, there is no change. As for James Murdoch, uh, I'll listen when his uh, brother and his father say the same. They haven't said the same. Uh, well, I say I'll listen. I'll p take it seriously. Not that I'll change my views. My views are my views. But uh, you must put it in context. James Murdoch has been at odds with his brother and father on this for a long time. And what I have to say is that if you have someone who's a member of a board that's trashing their own product and uh, employees publicly, well, if you were an employee, you get sacked for that. And so uh, I'm a little bit surprised. And, um, Andrew, just as for what you say about subscriptions, I have no idea what mm. the truth of what you're saying. Okay. Andrew, uh, uh, let's just uh, straighten up on this, though. The bottom line is the bottom line. We've seen Tesla shares going mm. through the roof. We know that Australia's... So, you Tesla shares. And Tesla fine, shares, yep. yep. Uh, Hasn't first turned a profit, by the way, Eddie. Yeah, no, no, I'm not, not worried about that. Uh, Andrew, I'm just going to have a conversation. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not actually having a, a debate. We're, we're a bit of a different yeah. show. We give people their chance to have their say. My point mm -hmm. is this, is that... And this, you might say that I'm, I'm left of, of extreme right. I'm probably more in the centre. No, you're so. not left of extreme right. You're left of left. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, look, Eddie, you, you support Labor, okay? No, I don't. That's, that, is, that is completely untrue, Labor. Andrew. Don't bother. You just said you people get put in boxes. You're well, you to told me I'm a right of Attila the Hun. So well, I, 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 I tell you what, in the court of law, I reckon I'd win that argument. But anyway, no. stick with the... Stick well, with the don't, kind of Andrew, don't, 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 don't. Come on, Andrew. Don't, 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 you're throwing up red herrings here, mate, because you've done a backflip of epic proportions. Sergei Bukta couldn't do a backflip as well as you've done in the paper today. So forget that, but let's get down to the serious right. business. It's what do you think, reading. Andrew? What should we be doing? Read the article. You cannot read. I quote what I've said 15 years right. ago. If you, if you seriously it's want us to believe that you have been supporting climate change, change for 15 years, then, mate, you need to go back and have a good yeah. read, because I'll read some to you. Here's one from Andrew Bolt, December 8, 2019. The science is clear. Morrison can do nothing to change the world's climate and stop fires. Australia's just too small to make a difference. Yeah, well, it does. In the inter International Court of Common Sense, it makes a difference. But anyway, uh, we go on. Uh, you've, you've, kicked the, you've kicked into Greta Thunberg. You've beaten up a 15, 16-year-old girl. I haven't beaten up anyone. Oh, yeah? I don't beat up people. I've never seen a girl so young and with so many mental disorders treated mm -hmm. by so many adults as a guru. Correct. That's right. correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the big scare now is not that we're heating the world to hell, but that so few journalists and scientists mm -hmm. refuse. Now, I don't want to get into the climate change right. debate, Andrew. I want to get yeah. into this. Right? Oh, no, no, you put that as something that uh, is at odds with what I said today. How do you think that's at odds with what I said today? Andrew, I think, it, again, I don't want to be arguing with you. I want to know what the well, government's going to be doing. Right? I want to, I want to put yeah. this to you. Should well, we be putting, you, should you, our you government... Don't want to argue with me. Don't, don't first say that I'm right with Tiller the Hun, that it's, no. which is not true, that yeah, I've done okay. a backflip, which is not true, that if this and that was not true. I mean, if it's just about the government, talk just about the government. Don't have a sort of drive-by shooting on the way. Yeah, OK. All right, let's stick with the government, then. I, I, I could argue all day. Um, so, and I don't have necessarily have an government. argument here. I want to get to the point. Do you think that now Scott Morrison has to mm -hmm. jettison his handful of coal and sit down and come up with a 21st century policy that may include nuclear power, that may include continuing with coal mining to facilitate countries like uh, uh, in, uh, China, India, etc., until such time as they build their own nuclear power plants or do something else which will then leave us in the dust. Do we need to just go in there and look at what we're doing, the deals that were done previously on exporting our, our uh, gas, uh, which seems to be sold pretty cheaply offshore with not much benefit back to the Australian public? Do we need to look at solar panel? Do we need to look at wind? Do we need to come up with a policy that is there for Australia as opposed to paying off uh, people like Clive Palmer and all these other people that have been there promulgating coal all the way through? Is the, the day now uh, look, uh, that we sit down and come up Palmer. with a universal Australian policy for the future of this country? Look, with that going over each point and mm. picking out problems with them. Overall, what I think he does need to do is a the approach that I recommend in the article, which is put, always talk about costs and benefits, because a lot of the schemes of the, of the Greens and 
Labour, the sort of schemes that you seem to be leaning to, uh, come at a huge cost. And I don't think you actually will do anything for the climate. Now, when you talk about nuclear, there's something where you might say, well, look, here is something that would help cut emissions. Um, it does come at a cost, of course, but it has other benefits. Like, we are running short of power. This is just astonishing. Victoria, for instance, used to be the big one, you know, the biggest exporter of electricity. Now we're desperately an importer, shutting down mega businesses like Portland, you know, endangering the smelter there, because we've run out of power. So I'd say, look, if no one's going to invest in a coal-fired power station and stick in a, a, a nuclear power station, it's no no emissions, it's cheaper than some alternatives and gives you base load power. And by the way, you know, this is good for global warming. So I think that's one where you could say, do the cost-benefit, works out. So do it. But, Andrew, but basically, we all need to get on the page of not saying, hey, listen, you deny it totally global warming, you know, you've always been a denier, you can try to get rid of that term, and, and on the other side, you're just a complete fruitcake, and look at, all right, the world has been warming, like I said, for 15 years, the world's been warming slightly, is it good, is it bad, and your scheme to fix it, would it do good, would it do bad, and what the hell's the cost? I can't see how we can lose by being factual instead of sitting there throwing rocks at each other. Well, Andrew, if we're going to bring a bit of balance to the debate, that seems like a good thing. We appreciate you uh, you joining us. We'd like to give everyone their say, and uh, you certainly had an opportunity to do that. Hopefully we can do it again. Didn't, Andrew, very, very didn't, interesting. Didn't, didn't realise I was no Carl Marx either. Good on, Andrew. Thanks for coming on, <laughs> coming on this morning, mate. We appreciate it. Andrew's gone. I think that was Andrew Bolt. Six minutes to eight. Oh, he hung up. That's what Neil Mitchell did that with John McEnroe. He hung up on us. <laughs> there we go. <laughs>